Goff at West End Plastic Surgery. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about Vectra three-dimensional imaging. This is a program that was made by Canfield. It's the most robust three-dimensional imaging program that we have out there today. We use it in order to help educate patients and myself, uh, as well as help from a surgical planning standpoint. Vectrinal imaging utilizes a specialized camera system. It takes six individual pictures and then combines all of those digitally to create a three-dimensional image. This can be used for the face, can be used for the breast and the body, and we can even do three-dimensional body images so we can twist and turn the body. It helps us see inside the patient's mind. And I think that's probably one of the most difficult things that we have to do from a educational and a planning standpoint is get inside the patient's mind to see what they see and see what they want to see. So in order to do this, the Vector three-dimensional imaging gives us a platform on which to help educate the patients, educate ourselves, and create a little bit more precision in surgical planning for rhinoplasty, for chin augmentation, and very specifically for breast augmentation. So let's go take a look. So this is the Vectra machine right here. It has the array of cameras. Uh, we need the camera to see the patient in particular ways in order for it to use its algorithms to create the three-dimensional image. And once everything is captured, it takes about two to three minutes to create the three-dimensional image, and then it comes up on the screen. <clears throat> so this is a typical facial image. And as you can see, we have a variety of options, rhinoplasty, chin augmentation, and contouring. We're going to go to rhinoplasty. We're going to have it put the landmarks in place. And then we do a little bit of manipulating to ensure we have absolute precision from a landmark standpoint so that it knows exactly where to make adjustments when we ask it to. Once we have these set in place, we can do an assessment on the patient and look at things such as symmetry and see what the different sides of the face look like, two rights, the normal face, two lefts look like, and they help uh, get a, an idea of proportion. There are a number of other smaller manipulations. Once we have looked at all of the different variables that we want to assess, we can start doing rhinoplasty manipulations. So we can bring the dorsum down, we can bring her radix down or up if we need to, we can deep project her nose, we can tip it up or down if we need to, in this case we're going to keep it right there, we can start to change the width or the pinch of the nose, manipulate the tip, the ala just a little bit, and start to come up with some modest changes. And if we need to, we can do a little bit of free form adjusting in order to create the shape that we want to create. And as we go through this process, we can continue to assess with the patient. Do they like, do they not like, what kind of small adjustments are they interested in until we come up to a final product. And in some cases, the final product isn't really realistic, and this allows me to help the patient understand what's possible or what's not possible, either because of baseline anatomy, uh, surgical technique, uh, previous surgery, lots of different possibilities. The other option is chin augmentation, and we can use it to look at chin in many different ways, vertical height, horizontal height, we can even manipulate various areas and also warping in order to bring certain areas out or in in order to create the balance and shape that we want to create to get to a, a patient's goal. And then the final from the face is the contouring standpoint. 
being able to liposuction an area. or warp an area just a little bit in order to get a more refined contour. Once again, to help a patient see the possibilities, but at the same time, educate both of us uh, on what the expectations should be. As I said earlier, this can be used for breast and body as well. Most of the major mi implant manufacturers have the implants in here, so when we get the body image up, uh, have uh, done the manipulation I can sequentially put different breast implants in once again for a patient to see what a type of implant will look like on our body or on her body. This is a simulation. It is a computer doing things with pixels with a pretty refined algorithm, but it is still a simulation. Patients have to understand that this is not a guarantee of results. This is really more of a tool to help us, both of us, figure out exactly what the endpoint is going to be. So I think vector imaging allows us a lot of precision within the framework of a consult as well as a surgical planning. We've enjoyed using it. We continue to use it. We use it uh, to help us also monitor our results over time. Uh, and I, I think just it's one thing that helps set us apart. This is Dr. Paul Ruff at West End Plastic Surgery and I look forward to seeing you soon.